Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mayra Peña, and I'm going to be presenting the multispectral imaging and identification of mine tailing deposits from the Nacosari Mining District, north, northwestern Mexico. The aim of this project was to apply the use of remote sensing data and GIS to identify mine tailing deposits uh, in the Nacosari District by using normalized difference vegetation index and normalized difference tailing index approaches. The presentation today will cover a brief introduction, location, uh, data, methods, results, discussion, and conclusions. Um, mining is a primary economic activity essential for human development, but this implies a negative aspect, which is the environmental impact, mostly associated with processing operations and exposure of mine waste um, generated after extraction processes. Uh, these ponds or piles of mine waste materials are called uh, mine tailings. And since uh, chemicals were used in the process, the tailings may contain potentially toxic elements. So these tailings have to be monitored uh, by the mine company. But unfortunately, there are several cases where the tailings are not properly monitored or they have been abandoned by the company. So the material um, from these tailings gets suspended on the air or it gets incorporated into water bodies and traveling to surrounding areas and causing environmental risk. This happens a lot in Mexico, especially in states with a lot of mining activity, like Sonora, a state that is located in the northwestern side of the country uh, and is characterized by three metallogenic provinces, the orogenic gold province, the epithermal province, and the porphyry copper province. Uh, this last one, the porphyry copper, contains the study area, which is the Narcosari mining district and is the second most important porphyry copper district in Mexico. Um, the study area consists on a rectangular polygon of 9,000 uh, square kilometers with the Nacosari de Garcia town located in the center of the area. And Nacosari de Garcia town has three abandoned mine tailings residing close or within the urban area. And previous studies on these tailings have shown high concentrations of arsenic, copper, lead, and zinc, which are being spread through air and water, and as, shown, as shown in these images. And uh, the water that is getting incorporated into the river is um, traveling downstream to villages uh, whose major activities are agriculture and like livestock grazing. Uh, therefore, the identification of active and especially abandoned mine tailings is um, very important uh, for future uh, environmental assessments and remediation um, projects. Uh, the analysis was based in four images uh, from Sentinel-2A satellite, and they were obtained from the Copernicus Open Access Hub from the European State Agency. Uh, from two seasons, from summer of 2019 and winter of 2020. I chose these two seasons to make a comparison and detect which is the best um, suitable time for this analysis. And I did it following the method of Schimmer, where in his research project from 2008, he developed a uh, normalized difference tailing index using a standard MDVI from Landsat 7 imagery. Uh, he identified the location of copper tailings in Arizona, and since his methods uh, have such a high uh, standard of accuracy, I decided to apply um, this to my, to my research area. The first step was to make a correction of the Sentinel-2A images uh, with the purpose of converting the pixel uh, uh, the value digital numbers to reflectance values. The MDVI then was obtained considering the near infrared and the red bands, which in Sentinel-2 are bands 8 and 4. Then in a specific range from the MDVI has to be chosen, and this is called the MDTI. In this project, the range or the MDTI was adjusted to negative 0.037 to positive uh, 0.03. 
And this was based on nine tailings that were previously recognized by field inspections. Um, Schirmer also recommends to use an aggregate model besides the NDTI, and it, which was designed to eliminate the non-mine features from the resulting NDTA data. And this was employing a series of statistical analysis, uh, as well as reclassification tools. Uh, the, this consists in a two-step um, reclassification uh, filtering process. The first one consists on ranking pixels as a function of density using the focal statistics tool to perform a neighborhood operation. And the result is a cluster map of low to high frequency values, which are then reclassified. Uh, in this case, in this project, the reclassified pixels uh, were the ones with the value greater than 50 uh, based on um, the previously known uh, scalings. And they are shown in a blue color. Uh, the second step from the aggregate model consists on ranking shape fragments as a function of proximity using the aggregate polygons tool. The resulting data is a vector file containing polygon layers displaying the perimeters of the aggregated polygons, and here are represented in a red color. And in the image, we can see the, the proximity filter overlaying the density filter, and we see how the, the filter elim eliminated the non-mine features remaining after the combined NDTI and density filter application. Um, so a result from the NDTI and the aggregate mo model, uh, uh, we have 36 polygons for the summer analysis, the image on the left, and 113 polygons from the winter analysis, the image on the right. But the polygons uh, do not represent the number of classified tailings. Since um, the polygons were not spatially large enough to fall within the proximity parameters, they um, do not aggregate, and they result in multi-polygons instead of uh, this one that represents uh, uh, one tailing. Myra, can you speak up a little? It's a little bit hard to hear you. Oh, okay. Also, for, um, for the winter analysis, uh, the image um, on the right had um, a little uh, shadowing present, so the, the analysis, uh, the shadowing made a little bit of noise in this analysis, um, misclassifying some of the pixels on the upper right corner. Uh, but comparing the results with the, um, with the, the previously known uh, tailings, uh, we have six tailings um, classified in the analysis from the summer, uh, the image on the left, and five um, tailings classified as tailings in the analysis in, the, in winter and the image on the right. Uh, the output images were evaluated using confusion matrices for both seasons, computing using users, producers, overall accuracy, and kappa coefficient. The overall accuracy for both seasons is greater than 99%, but this is because the not tailings class represents most of the study. Uh, the user security for summer is 81%, while the uh, user security for winter is 53%. The user security denotes the re reliability of the map and tells us how well the map represents what is really going on on the ground. The producer security indicates how often are real features on the ground correctly shown on the classified map. And for the producer security for a summer is 79% and for winter is 68%. And the kappa coefficient tells, tells us how much the reference, the ground truth, um, uh, and the map, the, the, the results of the analysis, um, how much they agree. And the closer, uh, the kappa coefficient is measured from zero to one. And the closer it is to one, the better the agreement between the, the two of them. And for the summer, it was 0.8, and the winter was 0.6. So um, the capital coefficient on, on the summer is better 
the agreement on the summer is better than the winter one, as well as the users and producers agree. Uh, to conclude, we learned that the methods applying this present study revealed high accuracy percentages to efficiently identify mine tailings using remote sensing and GIS um, methods. And the summer is the more suitable season to carry on the method, having a greater accuracy. Thank you, and I'm open to questions. <laughs>